Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the all new 2024 Chevrolet Traverse. Huge shout out to Park Chevrolet for providing this SUV for me today. Take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. So this Traverse is the LT model. It's finished off in radiant red. MSRP is just over $47,000. Now powering the Traverse is a two and a half liter four cylinder turbo that is paired to an eight speed automatic it now pumps out 328 horsepower, 326 pound-feet of torque. That's 18 more horsepower and 60 more pound-feet of torque over the previous V6. Now this LT is front-wheel drive. It weighs in right around 4,600 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in around seven seconds. And it has a fuel capacity of 19.4 gallons. You'll expect to see around 17 miles per gallon in the city, 25 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 121 inches. Its overall length is 204. It has a width of 79 and a half, a height of 70.9, and its ground clearance measures in at seven and a half inches. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, this specific model has a very nice look with all the gloss black accents with this radiant red. Now, as we work our way to the front end design, we still have the Chevy bow tie right in the middle with the chrome finish. There's also gloss black for the entire section that runs on both sides of that grill for the badge. Now this model even gets a forward facing camera. There's plenty of cutouts in that grill to provide a lot of cooling. And this has a really nice set of LED headlights, DRLs and turn signals, as well as some functional openings to provide even more cooling. Now there's also parking sensors up front. There's the sensor for the distance pacing. And then there's some plastic in the lower section but I think it gives it a really nice look. There's also a few lines that come down the hood to uh, give it a great look as well. Now, as we work our way to the side, it gets a really nice set of wheels. Traverse is also finished off in gloss black, as well as the mirror caps, where there's the turn signal as well as a camera. There's no sunroof for this model, but it does get the roof racks up top. And then there's more gloss black for the rest of the trim. You'll notice too that the plastic works its way to the fender arches as well as the uh, lower side skirt there. And then this has a really uniquely shaped rear glass being very thin up top there going all the way to the back pillar. Now the Traverse is a three row SUV. So from the outside, it doesn't look quite as large as some full size three rows, but you'll see on the inside how Chevrolet gives you a lot of space. There's also really nice lines that run down the side and take a look at the new LED taillight design with this split look in the upper and lower section. This does have the uh, integrated spoiler up top that's body colored and gloss black with the third brake light. There's the wiper blade. Now there's a backup camera, all of the parking sensors. The Traverse in general can tow up to around 5,000 pounds when you do have it properly equipped. We have a 1,500 pound minimum for that towing capacity. So it just depends on the package that you get. And then there's also all the parking sensors down below and then gloss black in that lower diffuser with the square quad tip dual exhaust, which gives it more of a sporty look for this SUV. Now this does have remote start. So if we lock it, double tap this, we can start it up. Not going to be all that loud, but you can get another look at how the, the taillight designs look. And then if you just hold on that button, that is how you can shut it off if needed. You can double tap the button on the key fob or use the one to the right side of the backup camera to open up this power lift gate. Now I currently have the third row up. Take a look at the amount of space that you get with that third row up. It's actually a pretty spacious along with having sub floor storage. So you have a large bin where you can hide even more items. There's also some tie down hooks. You do have an area where you can put the cover and attach that. And then it's pretty easy to fold down this third row. Now you do have to have the second row in the correct position as the second row does slide forwards and backwards. So as long as you have those set properly, you can fold the seat down to get that much more interior space. And then you can fold the second row completely flat, giving you that much more interior space for any larger items. And then just grab on that strap and you can quickly lock that seat back into place. Very easy to do. And then you do have one button up top to close that power lift gate. And then as we work our way to the seating, we do have this chrome button right here you can use to lock the vehicle and use it to unlock the vehicle. Very nice door panel for this design with some brushed accents in the lower section. This model gets the Bose audio. There's also all the leather and white stitching, a little bit of storage in that lower section, and then some more brush trim for that release handle. And then this does get a very nice set of leather seats with all of the white stitching for these captain's chairs 
for your second row passengers. Now you do have this control here where you can recline and incline the seat. You can also use that to fold the seat completely flat. There is a bar up front that you can use to slide that forwards and backwards. Now there's also two different ways you can enter the third row. You could walk right through the middle if you were small enough to do that, or just grab this handle right here, and this is actually going to push the seat forwards, allowing you additional space to enter. So at five foot 10, I can easily climb into the back where this does have three seats. You do get a good bit of uh, leg room there. So just depending on where you have that seat, you can accommodate as needed. And at five foot 10, I actually have around two or three inches above my head. We can adjust that headrest there. My knees are a little bit higher up than the seat, so it does sit low, but honestly, I could ride around town with the amount of headroom, a little bit tight, but it is doable. You get auxiliaries as well as cup holders and a little bit of storage. So honestly, not that bad. We have that window there to give you some more lighting and then lights up top and some air vents. So that is definitely beneficial for the third row. And then you can slide that seat back into place and we can hop into the captain's chair now, where of course you're going to have a little bit more space. We have storage pockets. There's also cup holders. You have all of your climate adjustments, some auxiliaries, and then even more storage in the lower section. And then as far as headroom goes, I have a little bit more. These seats do recline, so you can go back a little bit and we even have the adjustable armrests. So you can place those down and just be yeah, nice and comfortable for the second row. So pretty spacious for, I would say the smaller size that it is with this three row SUV, you have a lot of practicality for everyone in the back. Now the door panel up front, just like the rear. However, we have the side mirror controls as well as your window adjustments, lock and unlock, trunk release, and then the same storage. And then power operated front seats that have a similar design to them. And then let's take a look now at the driver's seat as well as the all new screen. So we have that graphic currently playing for just the center there. And we can start this back up where we have the leather steering wheel as well as the lighting that you can see up at the top for the cruise control and the sensors. There's gloss black there, but a very nice design overall. There's paddle shifters on both sides as well as your controls for audio and tuning. So those are still retained with the paddles on the top section there. Now over on this left side, we have your cruise control settings. There's also a low mode. This is to activate super cruise, which is mainly for highway driving. You have your distance pacing too. And then on the right side, there's the heated steering wheel, your voice commands, some shortcuts to your music. And then you have this pages button to go through some more of the info on the screen. So currently the navigation is in full screen with miles per hour on the left side. You can go into a different screen where there's distance pacing as well as audio on one side. And then you have miles per hour and your tack on the left side. You can also pull up more of a calm screen to show miles per hour. And then you have more of a traditional view with the tack right in the middle and some vitals on both sides. And then you're back to the navigation. So really nice, just depending on what you need to see for the day. Over on this left side, there's the electronic parking brake. You do get a few different driving modes that you can go through and those will pop up on the infotainment system there. You have sport, normal, there's also snow and ice, and then back to sport there. There's the engine start stop, as well as a dimmer switch for the gauges. You get one air vent. And then as we work our way back to the center, this is the gear shifter for the Traverse. So if I pull it towards myself and down, that is for drive. Pull it again towards myself and up, that is for reverse, where now we can pull up that 360 camera system where you have a few different angles as well as being able to go between forwards and the rear facing camera. There's also some settings that you can go into just to make this work for you. So you have a lot of visibility for this. Park is also at the end of that stock there. So really easy to go through. And then as we work our way back to this massive infotainment system, there is one physical button for your audio adjustment. So you have the rotary dial there. You do have power up top, which also will mute it as well. And then for this home screen, you have a lot of icons like your auto park assist, your play store. You do have Android auto and Apple CarPlay. And then you have your phone, some other controls that you can quickly get into. If you push on the split icon up top, along with some more information that you can scroll through over on this left side, looks like you can customize it as well. So just depending on what you would like to see, you can also get into your music, pull up the navigation in full screen. You can get into your phone and then you can also get into some more controls here. 
If you go to Seymour, you have your lighting, you have drive and park, so you can quickly get through all of this. Now, hopefully you've been able to tell over on this left side, all three of these are fixed. So you can quickly get into your headlights, you can get into your lane keeping assist, as well as all of these controls here. There's no physical stocks like on most vehicles. So it's really nice that these are always going to be there and you can quickly get into all of your lighting. Now in the lower section, all of this is fixed. So you have your temperatures, you have your heated seats, AC, fan speed right in the middle and where you would like the air to go. Two air vents are underneath that. And then you do get some physical controls for the temperatures. So you can adjust those down below. You have a few more controls for that. There's also wireless charging with some auxiliaries tucked away in the back. Two cup holders, a little bit of storage that you can close. And then there's even additional storage in the entire lower section there. Now, when you open up the armrest, you have this removable storage bin, a little bit more storage where you can place some items, as well as in the glove box where you have a lot more space. Now we do have the rear view mirror as well as a sunglass holder up top. You do have some safety call buttons as well as the dome lights. And then here's a look at visibility with the three row SUV. You still have some large glass on both sides so you can easily see over both shoulders. So as we jump behind the wheel now for the all new Traverse, I really don't have too much experience with this SUV. I have been in them periodically, but it's really nice to be able to take a look at where the Traverse is now and some of the upgrades that this SUV has received. The biggest one is the engine, like I mentioned earlier. So this model always had the V6. Now we have that turbo four cylinder, which seems to be something that a lot of manufacturers are going towards. They're going towards these smaller engines with the turbos. You can have your likes and dislikes about them. Likes that I have seen, you get more power. So you get 18 more horsepower, 60 more pound feet of torque which is nice to see in any vehicle, really. A vehicle like this, it's going to give you a little bit more get up and go, so that way you can safely merge in situations like that. Fuel economy, from what I've seen across the board on any manufacturer, the four cylinders can get slightly more. I don't think it's significant enough to go to a four cylinder turbo, but that's for a whole nother discussion. But I really like this for the time that I've been with it today. I like this curved screen, which a lot of companies are going towards but this just drives and feels very, very nice. And it's been super quiet as well. I like the fact too that it's not a large vehicle in the sense that it's pretty easy to maneuver in traffic and parking lot situations, uh, but you get a good bit of space on the interior, which is also very nice. Now let's put it into a sport mode so we can just use this toggle here and then we'll give it a little bit of gas here. I like the pep that this has with the extra pound feet of torque, mild acceleration, and we're up to speed there. I also noticed too that we do have the low range gear, so you can use the stock to put it down into L, but you do have to be at a certain speed. So this is going to be for parking lot speeds. Maybe you are uh, off the pavement, you're on some gravel roads or something, and you wanna use that to hold the gear. You have the option to do that. Now you can also get the Traverse with all wheel drive. So if you need a little bit more grip for inclement weather, different driving situations, you have that option to go with as well. And as far as just the drive for this, it's been very comfortable. There's no road noise, wind noise. I like these seats too. They have good lateral support to them. And this would just make for a great daily driver. It's something that if you need that extra space in the back, it's going to give you a longer vehicle without giving you a larger vehicle at the same time. So I think Chevy did a really good job with the sizing and just what you get for this vehicle, as well as all of the technology that's available too. And we still have it in sport mode. We'll give it another acceleration. And just like that, we are back up to speed. Now, again, we do have the different driving mode. So if you want to adjust your throttle response, you can go from sport to normal if you just don't want quite as much. So if I give it another acceleration, you can kind of feel a difference. It's not going to be a major difference, but it's nice that you can utilize those as needed. But this is what it's like to be behind the wheel for the all new Traverse. And I'd say we have a nice layout. 
as you've already as I've already mentioned with the drive it's a very nice drive but everything seems to be very user friendly one thing that I want to talk about too a lot of people aren't quite on board yet with the full screen and all of the controls that are actually in the screen but this traverse gives you physical controls as well especially for your audio adjustments and all of your climates I think that's probably the two major controls that people like to have actually physical buttons for. So it's a really nice blend between both of them without giving you too many controls to get confusing. So it's a really nice layout, especially with everything as far as the steering wheel controls and everything go. But it's been very nice to drive. And we have plenty of visibility. I do wish with the 360 camera, this might be an option on some higher trim levels, getting that digital rear view mirror which would be helpful, especially since we have that 360 system on this vehicle here. And like I mentioned, well, we do have some standard safety features. I just felt the left of the seat vibrate as we had that car pass us. So we have a lot of the standard safety features like that pedestrian detection, the cross lane assist, all of that. And it will actually vibrate in the seat as you start to get closer to objects behind you as well. So I just felt that there. Obviously you have the parking sensors and everything. And so I think you get a really nice three row SUV for the price too, sub $50,000, which in today's market, three row SUVs are starting to climb and climb in their MSRP. Under 50 grand for this with everything that you get, I think is a really good deal. And so that's going to wrap it up for the all new 2024 Chevrolet Traverse. Once again, a huge shout out to Park Chevrolet for providing this SUV for me today. Take a look at their website. Also give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.